Hey all, incredible discussion today. I have back on the podcast none other than Tucker Goodrich. And if you recall, back in early April 2020, I brought Tucker on because he's a risk manager kind of in Wall Street and he was in charge of the SARS, the original epidemic, kind of risk management, and he does all the math and the Excels. And he discovered the Italian lockdown came in after the actual curve had peaked. So it had no real impact on the curve. And that was early April 2020. So we've been so busy the last couple of years, but we're back in the seat and we're going to have a discussion on that by all means and so much more. So great to meet you again, Tucker, here anyway. It's a pleasure, Ivor. Great to see you again. Yeah, it's super. And uh, just as I mentioned there in the intro, like it's just surreal to look back. I mean, I've other interviews as well with Professor Beda Stadler, the immunologist and the Nobel yep. Prize winner, uh, Michael Levitt. And they're all around the summer of 2020 and they were all absolutely prophetic and accurate. But our one was in early April 2020. Well, you know, speaking of prophetic, I don't think I discussed it with you. I discussed it with Dave Feldman in a podcast that he I think it's since removed, where part of my spreadsheet was a prediction model. And it exactly, it didn't have the longer tail, but it mapped that it was already on a, on a curve that would start dropping back down pretty soon. Um, it was just, and then Michael Evett, of course, who, you know, actually knows how to do maths, <laughs> unlike myself, who am just a, you know, hobbyist, scrabbling around in an excel spreadsheet came out and showed that all the same things at which stop at which time i stopped worrying about doing any more of that kind of work i did the same thing in sweden and a couple other places just on my own and it was you know it was clear that you know i mean the amazing thing about it to me when i was doing that is that the initial spread was far higher than for instance the uh the models um what's his name over in the uk the Ferguson. Ferguson, yeah. It was far higher than Ferguson's model showed, right? And then it very, but it very quickly declined and continued to decline. And something that his model never incorporated. He had this, you know, as I think we discussed, this rookie move of projecting a constant growth rate, which never happens in nature, right? And anybody on Wall Street, you know, the instant instant way to know if somebody is blowing smoke up your butt is if they project a constant growth rate, right? There has to be decay. It always decays, right? The Wall Street phrase is no tree grows to heaven. And it was, you know, I mean, it was shocking how pathetic that guy's work was. And it was even more shocking how much impact it had all around the world. Yeah. But I think it, it wasn't just him having that impact. The whole system, and we kind of found out afterwards, was primed. And to be honest, I think Dave Feldman, as you mentioned, around April, he took down his videos because I think he heard inside the system this was going to go on for years and anyone talking about it would probably get censored. So right. the word was actually out. And for Ferguson, he had five catastrophic bad modelings prior to COVID. Right. And I mean, they were catastrophically out by a factor of hundreds, orders of magnitude. And he precipitated the call of all the animals in the foot and mouth uh, debacle of the, I think it was the 80s or early 90s. And there's a documentary about that now, came out in 2020, I'll send it to you. Shocking. I didn't realize that that had COVID-like fraud in it. But it was Ferguson Imperial College modeling that caused the deaths of millions of animals, mostly unnecessarily. And I think right. there might have been the early anti-meat agenda was playing out there through the funded kind of people. But, in but the, and, college, the, and the SARS and MERS and the swine flu, you swine. know, and I mean, through a lot of that, as you mentioned, I was a risk manager on Wall Street. And one of my responsibilities was business continuity. So you know, even though I never heard of Ferguson, I knew that the industry of pandemic prediction had a pattern of overhyping these things and then they didn't pan out. And I expected that would prove to be the case in this instance. Obviously, this was thankfully not nearly as severe as Ferguson was um, projecting in terms of 
how uh, the mortality rate, but it did indeed spread all around the world and had a huge impact on like a lot of the other ones. So, although again, not the impact that he was predicting. No, but uh, I was just going to finish up there actually with Imperial College it has taken, I believe, three hundred and twenty million dollars over the last eight or nine years from the kind of Gates Foundation, and they're up to their neck in uh, Chinese uh, kind of correspondence and collusion or cooperation and so much more. So it's obviously a hotbed of the pandemic industry or the kind of biosecurity state or big pharma interests. I mean, right. That that's that's just clear as day. And and hence a string over 20 or 30 years of outrageous predictions that were always going to cause societal disruption, industry profiteering, uh, destruction of farming and local independent production. You know, that was the foot and mouth one. And I think there was one more. It's always in the interests of corporate that they come out with these absurd predictions. But that, well, that's not, where not we just, are, I think. Not just corporate, because the academics need funding, right? The World Health Organization needs funding. Um, and they do a great job of continuing to scare people. And, you know, they... Now they've they're on top of the world. They finally had something that came along and actually did become a pandemic, unlike all the other ones that they'd been worried about. And has to people who aren't paying close attention, it has made them look very valuable. And I'm sure, and I will include folks like Bill Gates in that category of people. Um, and you know, and there are a lot of government government entities who are very much in favor of having everybody scared to death because it gives them a lot of power. And I mean, you know, I don't know. It, it, I realized early um, early on how much this was just morphing into a political issue and it had passed the science, right? I mean, when, when they threw the 100 years of pandemic planning manual out the window right at the beginning, then it was like, okay, clearly, clearly you guys aren't actually interested in, you know, doing what works anymore this is just mm -hmm. what's going to benefit you yeah and you know i'll put on the screen uh i'll just put in afterwards in editing the summary from a beer i think balan in in pandata did a great summary of those or that massive document the who 2019 updated pandemic guidelines and some people say oh that's for flu but we know that flu is the same transmission dynamics, the same lack of serial interval. It's in the coronavirus family, practically, not exactly, but they're so related. Well, but effect effectively, functionally, it's the same disease transmission, same yeah. symptoms. I mean, they, it's hard to tell them apart, you know, without a test. It might as well be flu. And the seasonality, because other like rhinoviruses and RSV, they have their own seasons and their own dynamics. But flu and corona, when you look it up and it's it's there, right. the seasonality is overlapped completely. That just speaks to how how intimately close they are. So the right. pandemic guidelines, 100 pages, again, I'll, I'll have it on the screen, the summary of those guidelines, but essentially based on 100 years of Western science, no lockdowns don't make sense. Masks don't Ineffective. make sense. Contact yeah. tracing doesn't make sense once it's entered a country to any extent. It, that contact tracing only works when you got one guy at the airport and he's he's in a room and everyone else is in suits, you know, and you may be tracked. Did he meet someone else and they haven't yet met someone? And we can well, find con them maybe? Con contract tracing works great for things that are hard to catch, like Ebola, right? I mean, that's very there. It's very effective. It doesn't spread quickly. Yeah. But, you know, if you can, you know, as happened in Connecticut, where I was living at the time, some guy walked, you know, uh, it got to Connecticut, they think, in part because some guy took a flight from South Africa and went to a party and there were 200 people in the room and a whole bunch of them got it because that's how fast. And, you know, at that point, the authorities said it's impossible for us to do contact tracing. And that was right at the very beginning. I know. I know. But it's like everything in this. And, you know, I'll have to I may have to censor parts of this or if it's going on YouTube, because things have obviously got insane with censorship. It's.
We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important public service announcement. Well, guys, I'm afraid, yes, the censorship has become too difficult to continue certain discussions. I checked as I was editing and myself and Tucker's fascinating conversation begins to bring up government and publish scientific data that may not align fully with the narrative. So I'm afraid I don't have the bandwidth to go through editing out and guessing what may get me into trouble. Uh, factual data, of course, throughout, but one never knows. So the links down below, you can go to my other platforms and see the full versions of interviews where we can discuss actual factual data and we can counter misinformation. Don't ever feel that you're denied these full discussions. It's just certain platforms have become really problematic in the past couple of years. As always, thanks so much for your support. It's crucially important more now than ever before to have investigative analysis and the publishing of factual data and inferences from the scientific world, even if they do go against the narrative. And the legacy media, of course, and corporate media will not cover things that go against advertisers or narratives in general. So really important, and my links are down below to support me. Huge appreciation for those who have done and continue to do so, and anyone who can come on board. And I keep doing my best to get reality out there and counter the challenging environment that we find ourselves in. So thanks so much, guys.